Mom, I am so glad you were able to make it to my big housewarming party. Come on in, come in, come in. Oh, don't worry about taking off your shoes. This is all just a bunch of animated cutouts anyway for an opening joke. It's not like you're gonna be tracking dirt anywhere. Let me show you around. Here on the first floor, we have the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom. Behind that door over there is the nightmarish hellscape of my tortured childhood memories. We don't go in that one. Now let's check out the second floor. Watch your jump. They may look a bit small, but don't worry, you'll be just fine. For some reason, up here we have the great room, my security office, a room dedicated to my everlasting regret over my dead children's birthday, and the room inexplicably filled with water. Isn't it quirky? I like to think this house has personality. I know, I know, it's a little bit big for a family of two. Oh, and careful of those boxes. But I think we'll grow into it nicely. And just you wait until I show you the basement. internet welcome to game theory where today it's back to the basics back to overthinking things that nobody in their right mind would ever want to overthink it's january it's cold youtube is threatening to implode on itself it's time for something good so sit back relax and let matpat guide you through the absurd physics of box stacker simulator 2017 oh Wait, you've never heard of it? I don't know, maybe you missed its release last year, sandwiched between Mario Odyssey and FNAF 6. Or maybe you know it by its other name, Hello Neighbor. You see, today's a bit of a personal episode for me. Anyone who watches our live stream saw Steph and I play a lot of Hello Neighbor last year. And sure, the game wants you to think that the villain is our mustachioed neighbor or the bespectacled shadow man, but no! Stand aside, Wedding Tux, Bowser, and Molten Freddy, because Villain of the Year 2017 were these simple, stupid, cardboard boxes. You trip over them, they fill up your inventory, and worst of all, you gotta stack them into unsteady stairways, just hoping, praying to reach new sections of the house. Being 100% real here, if the neighbor put a giant stack of boxes in front of the door to the basement, I'd been like, nope, not dealing with this. You keep your damn secrets. So after the months of headaches these things have caused me over 2017, it's time that I get my revenge in what is undoubtedly the pettiest, lamest, and nerdiest way possible by proving that they shouldn't be able to function the way that they do in the game. Could a human the size of our awkwardly proportioned protagonist use these things to platform his way through this pad's peril? Get ready because by the end of today's episodes you're gonna be the life of the party, able to wow your friends with the finer details of the industrial fabrication of the mightiest of moving devices, the humble cardboard box. Woo! Make sure you put that one as the headline on your online dating profile. To begin today's episode, also Austin from The Science, you may know him as the guy who shouts a lot for easy humor rather than writing witty jokes, already figured out how big the cardboard boxes are in Hello Neighbor for his video on the architecture of the house. So, um, hey, Captain shouts a lot. Can I borrow the box math that you used for your Hello Neighbor video? No, you were mean to me. And I have to update my Twitter account with more hot takes. Calm down there, Screamo. Need I remind you that you started a hashtag protest because I merely suggested that you swear less in your videos so you could not get demonetized? Plus, you do shout a lot. Okay! Wow, I really do just default to shouting. <laughs> The info's in your inbox. All right, so we know from Austin's in-game milk carton measurements that the boxes are 16 inches by 19 inches along one side. From this edge here, we can see that they're corrugated cardboard boxes, which is just a fancy way of saying that it has these up and down sine wavy like ribbons of paper inside of them. These things are called flutes and were invented back in 1856 as a liner for tall hats to help them stand up. No joke. Anyway, a few years later, they started being used in boxes to greatly reinforce the strength of the box without using that many more materials. But just how much they reinforce the box depends on the classification of the flute. There are six common types of flute. A flutes, B flutes, C flutes, E flutes, F flutes, and pan flutes. 
No one likes the last one. Each letter classification refers to a different number of waves in the paper per foot. So by counting, I was able to determine that the neighbor is using specifically E-fluted boxes, which have much smaller, tighter waves, thereby making these boxes much more crush-resistant than the other classifications that have much taller waves. We can also tell just by looking at the box that it's a single-walled construction. The stronger, double-walled varieties would have a piece of fiberboard in the middle separating two layers of flutes. Our boxes don't have that. Lastly, how the box is folded plays into how strong it is. This particular form of box construction is what's called a regular slotted container. It's just some flaps that you have to fold in and tape shut. This type of box is the one that you've used to move, like, dozens of times. And if you think that's a big no-duh moment, well, consider this. As I was researching the industrial manufacturer of boxes, I found that there are over 12 different box folding patterns in just lists of basic designs. It's crazy how many different ways you can make a box out of just some simple folded paper, each one with various pros and cons. Anyway, with all of that information in hand, we have everything that we need to solve today's theory because of a little thing called the edge crush test. You see, boxes are used all over the place, but most prominently in warehouses. So smart engineers quickly realized that the most important part of a box's functionality was how much you could stack on top of them. Enter the edge crush test, or ECT, where engineers take a strip of cardboard and see how much weight it takes to crush it. It's like the hydraulic press channels on YouTube, but way less exciting because, you know, it's cardboard. Each box gets assigned with a number denoting how many pounds of pressure per square inch they're able to withstand before crushing. 50? 50 pounds per square inch along the edge. 32? 32 pounds per square inch along the edge, and so on and so forth. And if you stop and look at it, most boxes have these right on the box. I mean, seriously, I just looked in my house and found a stamp on the bottom with all its different qualities, including its ECT rating. So the next time you gotta bring something in for show and tell, boom, collective kindergarten minds blown. In the case of a single-walled, e-fluted cardboard box like the ones that we found in the game, 32 pounds per square inch is the industry standard. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is our magic number. Now, it's important to know that the ECT is measuring per square inch because pressure is measured over an area. And while boxes are very thin, they do have a width. Boxes of this size with an E-fluted rating are almost always 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, something we can actually double check with some quick pixel measurements. With that number locked into place, the last details that we need are the weight of our character and the size of his shoe. The average adult male weighs in at about 166 pounds, but we're gonna drop that a bit because our protagonist is pretty pretty skinny, despite that freakishly large head of his. So I'm gonna say that he's about 150 LBSs. A few more pixel measurements and we're able to determine that our character's foot is just a little over 10 inches long, or about a size 7 shoe, which is kinda small. You know what they say about guys with small feet, right? That they have a greater likelihood of crushing cardboard boxes because the pressure of their weight is displaced across fewer square inches? <laughs> don't I know it. And with that, we can finally get our answer. Two 10 inch long feet standing on a box edge 3 16 inches wide means that when our protagonist is standing on the box, he's exerting pressure over an area of 3.75 square inches. 150 pounds of weight over 3.75 square inches gives us the final total. 40 pounds per square inch of pressure. Well over the 32 pounds per square inch most single-walled, regular slotted, e-fluted, corrugated cardboard boxes right at. Ha ha! Busted! Get dunked on! I knew you were nonsense boxes! I would teabag you right now, but I just scientifically proved that you would get crushed under my weight! Long story short, my quest for petty, nerdy revenge is at its end. I am vindicated. I've gotten the monkey off my back by demonstrating with science how a fake virtual box hey, could not and would would not work as a platforming Matt. device in this game Matt. and would instead get crushed under Matt. the weight of- What? Jeez, there's no need to shout, Austin. We talked about this. You have not taken gravity into account. Excuse me? Gravity, unlike almost every game in the world except for Assassin's Creed, instead of having higher gravity, Hello Neighbor has lower gravity. If you use wallpaper, a stopwatch, and some pixel measurements to check how fast you fall in the game, it's clear that gravitational acceleration is 4.637 meters per second squared. That's under half of Earth's normal 9.8 meters per second squared of gravity. But less than half of Earth's normal gravity means that the protagonist is no longer putting 150 pounds of force on the boxes, but instead 71 pounds. Spread that across the 3.75 square inches means that no, no, no. 
19 pounds per square inch? That means he's well under the crush test rating. Mm-hmm. No, I refuse to admit defeat. What about if we assume he's stepping out of the boxes one foot at a time? Then the weight is all on one pressure point, jacking the whole thing up to 38 PSI. The box fails. Until you consider that some E-fluted boxes have PSI ratings as high as 40, which means it is 100% plausible that these boxes are staying strong, baby. So what you're telling me is that in a game where you use wall sconces as platforms, where you use phonograph records to shrink trees, where you are expected to freeze a room filled with water by putting a globe in a refrigerator, then placing it on its stand in a completely separate, unconnected part of the house, that in a game this ridiculous, that the creation, manufacture, and behavior of boxes are 100% physically sound. Yep. Ah! There's no need to shout, Matt. The, the boxes beat me again. I can't win. I hate this game. I hate this game. Yeah, you should have covered the umbrella. That thing is ridiculous. Never again. Never again. Well, maybe once or twice more to cover the umbrella physics and then one final theory to tie up all the lore in this game. But never again with the boxes. No, you and the FNAF fan are not welcome here anymore. And in the meantime, remember, Remember, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.